James Kaufman, World News Report today, October 19th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to be having some geomagnetic storms and or disturbances today. Start out taking a look at the KP indexes that indicate just that, solar winds and plasma hitting Earth. Starting out at the Boulder Index, we see that we have three hours of a geomagnetic storm and three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. That followed up by the Fredericksburg Index. Now, these were not at the same time. The Boulder KP Index says that we had a geomagnetic storm Last night, central time from 3 to 6, followed by a geomagnetic disturbance from 6 to 9 this morning. Again, central time here in the U.S., where the Fredericksburg Index says that we had a geomagnetic disturbance from 9 to noon here in the U.S. Looking at the estimated planetary KP Index, the upgraded version that NASA and NOAA both use, we see that we've had a geomagnetic storm from 7 to 10 last night central time, 0 to 300 UTC time here, and then 6 hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. So pretty much all last night we were having geomagnetic activity according to the estimated planetary KP index. Finally, moving down to our college index, it looks like we've had 12 hours of geomagnetic storms and three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, making up most all of the day, 15 hours of geomagnetic activity from seven last night till just a few hours ago. So something must have impacted Earth. We'll take a look and see if we can determine what that is. Nothing was expected. And believe it or not, I don't see any plasma or solar winds on our Discover A satellites. All right, this is just a blow up of our planetary KP index. We start out the day in a geomagnetic storm. Only a 4.67. The, well, Weakest geomagnetic storm we can have. That was followed by six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. Jumping over to our GOES X-ray satellite. We see that we had our first major flare of the day. An M6.52, also called an M6.44. Came from Sunspot Group 3854, which is on our departing limb. That happened at about 7 UTC time, or about 1 a.m. in the morning. Next, we have an M1.7 flare here, as you can see. And that peaked about 14.30 UTC time, which is about 7.30 this morning. 7.30 this morning. And that also was generated by Sunspot. 3854 that is headed around our far or departing limb. Now let's see if we can figure out what may have caused all the chaos we see on the KP indexes today. Now your guess is as good as mine with all these M flares, but I would guess that probably this occurred from the activity we saw on the 16th of October. And that's just an educated guess using the average time that a CME arrives here on Earth after being generated by a solar flare from our star. Although, again, I don't see any plasma or solar winds hitting our satellites. Jumping over to spaceweatherlive.com, we can pick out that M flare out of 3854. Very simple. Sunspot group now. It used to be a Delta class sunspot group. Again, peaking right around 7 a.m. UTC time, which would be 1 a.m. Of course, central time here where I am. And that was followed by the M1.7, also out of sunspot group 3854, that peaked at 1430. 
uh, which would be about 7.30 this morning Central Time. Today we have a 10% chance of having an X-class solar flare, a 100% chance of having an M-class solar flare because we already have. And since we've been running a C baseline for months, I would say a 100% chance of having a C-class solar flare as well. We've had plenty of those and we've never been below a C baseline. So we have a C baseline flare. You can see this M6.52 was not only the strongest flare that we've seen today, but also the strongest solar flare we've seen over the last 72 hours. Headed over to HMI Intensigram, you can see 3854 is way over here on the departing edge of our sun. Although both flares may be geoeffective, because this is where our Parker spiral connection or our geomagnetic connection to our sun actually lies. And I will show you that later. We have a bunch of Earth-facing sunspot groups. It's like we have a total of eight sunspot groups, Earth-facing. And we've had two newly named, AR3863 and AR3862. We'll expect many more to be named shortly because we have a mess coming around the incoming limb. Taking a look at our sunspot groups, first I believe there's a little confusion here. 3854 is no longer beta gamma. It's a beta, a simple sunspot group. This has not been updated, I believe. Then we have 3856 and 3857 that are beta gamma. I will show you exactly where those are in just a moment. The rest of the sunspots that are on the Earth-facing side of the solar disk, I believe that there are going to be eight of them, just like we thought, are all either alpha or beta. Very simple. So 3856 and 3857 are basically Earth-facing beta gamma sunspots, still ready to produce an X flare. Headed over to our Lasco C3, we've put this together for just today. I want to see if either one of these flares produced a noticeable coronal mass ejection. Get this thing going and also see if there's any missing time here. First, we'll be looking for about 7 UTC time. If we see something interesting, we will zoom in. Lots of action, and that is what I was waiting for. Let's take a look at this. A pretty impressive comet or group of rocks headed through Lasco's view here. Uh, just above and to the left of our sun. Wow. Now back to looking for a CME around 7 UTC time. We'll watch the clock down here to see if anything's been removed. Getting up towards that time period. And our sun is this little dot right here, so it does take some time to get out of, well, this is something to guard the camera from any direct hits by a solar flare or CME. You can see the actual lens cover holder, but they show you where the sun is here. Now, what do we have here? We have a streak through here. And they're telling us that this is Atlas streaking by. It's happened on several of Lasco's, well, formats over the last couple of days. And we'll have to believe them, I guess. That was kind of odd as well. So, I'm moving along. I will hit play again. It does look like a chrono mass ejection is coming out of the sun from this direction. But, I would not think that that was associated with the departing limb. I don't see any time missing per se either. So this looks all very legitimate. Which is unusual, considering this is Noah, right? And let's play through the rest of it again. The only other M flare that we saw was the M 1.7, also out of the far limb, at about 14.30 UTC time. We wouldn't see it till after that. 
And I can say that we do have some activity here, but it doesn't look like a huge chromatis injection was produced. Okay, looking at NOAA's KP index breakdown, the predictions from the 19th through the 21st, someone must have run in and changed this this morning because they nailed it a 4.67 followed by uh, six hours of disturbance. Uh, almost impossible for NOAA to do unless they would have fixed it after the fact. And we see nothing coming in for the 20th or the 21st here. Over to our GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager. See some activity popping off the sun. Those are C flares. And the only two flares that we see, we do see it looks like the last M1.7 flare. Both flares were probably stronger than what we see on our ghost x-ray flux because they were partially eclipsed by our sun here, the limb of our sun. All right, today, of course, is the 19th. And our Space Weather Prediction Center, also upgraded recently by NOAA, has plasma starting out right about 5 centimeters cubed, maybe going up to 6 centimeters cubed. That's going to be bad information based on our satellite data and their prediction for the 19th solar wind-wise. They started them out at about 375 and finished them off at about 400 kilometers per second. We'll have to look and compare that to our ACE and DISCOVER satellites. All right, this is our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. And let's see. It will cover the second M flare coming up right about now, the M1.7 flare. Again, probably stronger eclipse. There it was by the limb of our outbound sun. But exactly where our Parker spiral or geomagnetic connection is located, and everyone's getting their fair share of sea flares for the day. All right, next over to our Discover satellite. Let's see how they did. They have plasma starting out at 5 and ending up at 6. It's like plasma actually breaks the space weather threshold here, but just barely. Uh, we see a 12 print. And that might be the highest print in that area. There's another one that looks like it might. 12.54 here. And there's a 20.07 for one minute. After that, uh, plasma actually is hanging out below 5 centimeters cubed. And it looks like it is going back up a bit here, but not into space weather conditions uh, over 10 centimeters cubed. So we had a little action here, but gosh, it's so little action. I can't hardly believe that this would uh, reflect in our KP index showing the geomagnetic storm and six hours of geomagnetic disturbance. And that would be our estimated planetary KP index. But just a 12 and then that one minute of data here at 20.07. 20, 20 so the wind started the day right at 389. They had them start the day at 375. That's pretty close. But, and they did go up, but uh, they went up higher than 400. Let's see some prints at 450 there. And most recently, 471. This might be caused by the small coral hole that had been Earth-facing that I showed you guys yesterday and should have shown you just now. We will take a look at that next. Temperatures have gone down with all the plasma moving around, have really been normal all day, and now are below normal, even with the solar winds uh, perking up there to almost 500 kilometers per second. Over to ACE real time solar winds so we can check our work. We do see some instances where this just barely breaks the space weather threshold. That's where they said we had a geomagnetic storm and disturbance through this period. And here we have wind starting at 400 and fluctuating, but definitely moving 
up to right under about 490 here. So they had them actually moving from 375 to 400. Uh, and we'll see the temperature here do the same thing, fairly normal, and then just go to nowhere. Very, very strange there. All right, over to STO. Let's see if we can get the day here. Today is the 19th. It's just started. All of our activity. There's the first large flare there. That'll be the M6.52. And right as this ends, you can see the M1.7 right there. Now, this is the coronal hole. Not much to it that I was talking about that might be affecting our solar winds. Headed over to STO at 171 angstroms. This is definitely the 19th. Let's back it up a bit. It started as the day starts. We're first looking for a time right around now. Up that far limb. I guess that was it. Not very impressive at 171 angstroms. Or maybe that was it. That was the f actually the 1.7. Looked bigger than the other one. Let's take another look at that. First one should impact at about 7 UTC time. Which is going to be right about now. And I guess that filament loop was it. There it was there. And that was the second one, I guess. It looked larger at 1430. Wow. I guess that first one was eclipsed by our solar disk, but it did come in as an M6.52 at 7 UTC time, which was very hard to see on SDO at 171 angstroms. Taking a look at the backside of our sun, looks like a nightmare coming around. More fun. I said the second half of October, at least these next two weeks going into November, is going to be hell. You can see that we have three different sunspot groupings. The red can just barely be seen here, and the green here. Most all of it is the same polarity called 002. We can also see how strong these sunspot groups are here on our gong. Not much feedback for having three satellites on the backside of the sun. Them telling us they can't get pictures of the backside of the sun with three satellites over there. Over to STO HMI magnetogram image. Well, there it goes. 3854. Uh, we have a couple of complex sunspots. Uh, basically earth facing. 5.6 and 5.7. And this really still looks like a reverse polarity sunspot that has just come around here. Uh, these are two newly named sunspots, and we'll have several more that will be named very shortly. Again, eight Earth spots currently Earth facing. Two Soho 284 angstroms. This is the coronal hole that I thought may have affected the solar winds, although temperatures did go down. This was taken at 6.06 .06 this morning here central time. You can see all of the activity that is peaking around the incoming limb. And you can see, well, they are 3854 finally departing. After really not being too bad as predicted it would be. All right, moving over to NASA's Isward Goodard Spiral. What are these black and white ropes? These are our Parker Spiral geomagnetic connections to our sun. They connect every planet and satellite to our sun. You can see that it looks like under Mars we must have Bepi. Uh, and it looks like here we have Osiris Apex. Here we have Venus. Here we have Parker SP. You can see how fast Solo is moving around. Uh, excuse me, not Solo. Yes, that's Solo. And Lucy down here. We have Earth here, and this is Stereo ahead, which should be located down here. This is where Stereo behind should be located. You can see that we have plasma impacting us around the 22nd. 
I don't know where it came from, but that's part of the model here. None of the flares from today have been modeled, period. Head over to the ESA, the European Space Agency's Euphoria. And today, of course, is the 19th. And we'll see how they did here. They have plasma a little bit high and moving further up tomorrow. I don't know why. They have that impact also for about the 22nd. But they have an additional impact before that. And on the 19th, they have solar winds starting out below 300 kilometers per second and moving down to about 260, 260 kilometers per second. Uh, really, really underestimated those solar winds and overestimated the plasma. Uh, I would give them an F overall. This is the ESA or Euphoria. And headed over to theplanetstoday.com. We can see the red haze around Uranus and Jupiter, which means that Earth has a geomagnetic connection to both. And the moon's not directly behind Earth, but it will be directly in front of Earth soon as Earth moves in front of these major gas giants. So I would guesstimate that in just a few days, perhaps four or five days, we're going to start to see some serious solar flares being generated by our sun here. So in summary, the biggest solar flare in 72 hours generated by AR3854 going around the far limb, followed by that same sunspot generating a M1.7 solar flare. It doesn't look like either one of them produced a large CME, and they very well won't be or probably won't be geoeffective towards earth that said god bless you and yours please share subscribe and always remember anything's possible in bizarro world